yo, yo, what's up, everybody? I don't, I don't want to introduce this like I'm an MTV VJ. What's, <laughs> what's up, everybody? Dude, Welcome back. Uh, I know. <laughs> Welcome back. It's the Front Row Podcast. How's everybody doing? How is your Friday going? We are entering the weekend, so everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's feeling happy, and their work week is over with. So we can we can talk about uncomfortable things and not be so not be so upset with each other. Let's just have conversation. So, how do you feel about that, Dante? How are you, my friend? I'm feeling great, Jesse. I got rosé with some raspberries in it. Wow. I'm ready for the weekend. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have a white girl weekend. It's going to be insane, brother. Let me tell you. Speaking of white girl weekend, I copied you from last time. I decided to upgrade. I went to Boochcraft to sponsor this is. episode. Yeah, I ha- I've never had Boochcraft before, but I got peach iced tea and I was like, all right, but it's no, hard no. kombucha. Yeah, so you got you to get the grapefruit hibiscus. That's the one. Okay. Well, this is still very nice. It's very refreshing. I, I like it. Um, it's the I, best. It's the best yeah. to the the hard kombuchas. I think it has the highest alcohol content. Overall, the taste is the best. I mean, that's you can't go wrong with a Boochcraft. Yeah, I'd be lying if I said this was my first one. I made sure to have one Boochcraft before I hopped on today's episode because we have a lot to talk about, and I really want to make sure that I'm in the right mindset for for what I'm about to say. So I wanted to make sure that I was a little liquored up because uh, we're going to get real. We're going to get real today, Dante. We are going to get real. You're a drunk. Yes, exactly. Let's get That's real. Right. Let's get real. I need help. Um, so what's up with you, my friend? How, oh, why, by the way, we have a big announcement to make. Uh, Dante, The Dante Greco Show, 1,000 subscribers. He went viral. He copied the front row playbook and posted about Amber Heard. And look where you look where you are. I'm so proud of you. Look where you are now. Not n- not just Amber Heard, but Morgan Tremaine. Right. That's true. Uh, our our, our ex boss. He's yeah. the key. People love Morgan Tremaine. We love him. And so I think that put me over the top. Yes. Oh. I've uh, reached the thousand subscriber threshold. I'm eligible for monetization. Uh, I'll be a millionaire by this time next year, easily. So thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for subscribing and commenting and watching. P- keep it up, please. It's it's so crazy how it works out because you don't. I I don't know how it worked out for you, but for me, it was. Um, I posted my video and it took about it took about twenty eight thirty hours, and then I woke up and I saw that I had maybe ten thousand views overnight, and it just like it blew my mind. I I couldn't believe it. And I had like 200 new subscribers and that's, you know, to me, that was like a whopping success. And then it just kept going and going. So I don't know how it happened for you, but it was, uh, it was a shock to the system when I saw people were actually watching and talking about my video. Yeah, no, mine, you hit the sweet spot because you put your video out in the middle of the trial. My problem was I couldn't put it out until the trial was already over. Yeah. So I've got like. 10 times less views than you, which is still a lot. I think it's five less, five times less. Because you're at like, less. yeah, something like that. Yeah, see, math was never my strong suit. That's yeah. why I'm here right now. Well, I'm just and trying to, like- I'm, I'm, you're selling yourself short a little bit here. But um, yeah, it was, I, I, I hit, I did hit the sweet spot, but I did post, I did wait a few days to post it because I was very concerned. I didn't want to be in, any sort of issue with people that will not be named, but I, I was, I, I know. was, One, I was after, scared. And once Morgan was like, I'm placing myself in the crosshairs. It, it made me think twice about making a video. Yeah. Too. So had I posted it maybe two days earlier, I could have potentially hit like a million views for all I know. So um, I posted it literally, I think it was like a day before the verdict was read. So, you know, it's possible that I had I waited two days longer it would have been similar. But either way, I'm happy for you. Congratulations. Uh, pretty soon we're going to have to rename this podcast because you will have more subscribers than I will. Um, but It'll cheers. Be right. Cheers. Um, there is a God. I will mm-hmm. have more, way more subscribers than you. Right. Yep. Well, God was never my strong suit, Dante. Um, <laughs> so... With that being said, um, a lot happened this week, and I I do want to really quick before we before we get into this, I don't know if you read the comments at all on on last week's podcast 
where we talked about Manson, we talked about Evan and Rachel Wood and, you know, comparing the two things. I did want to respond to a couple of, 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 of criticisms that I saw. I, I, cause I think they're fair, but I also think that people failed to um, recognize that some of the things that we said about Manson were slightly in jest that like, you know, saying, Oh, I think that we, that he did it. Just look at him. That was, I think that was obviously a joke. Um, but I did see a couple of critiques, like how I was saying that we just need to be fair to Evan Rachel Wood because just because they're friends or whatever, that doesn't mean she's a liar. Doesn't mean because she's friends with Amber, doesn't mean she's a liar. And the same with Johnny and Manson, just because they're friends doesn't mean Manson is innocent, right? We can't automatically draw these conclusions. And I think we were kind of harder on Manson, uh, than people wanted us to be. And I just want to say, I think you're right. Maybe we were like a little hard on him, but I think that the point we were trying to make was that Evan Rachel Wood is not guilty by default just because she's friends with uh, somebody who lost a defamation case. And I think that was uh, that was really the gist of the point of in the main thrust of what I was trying to say. And maybe we said a little, we were a little too hard on Marilyn Manson than we should have been. And yes, just because he looks like a freak does not mean that he is a freak and he's, he could, you know, it, he deserves his, his right to clear his name. I just, I think we just wanted to say, let's, let's be calm before we start drawing conclusions and posting stuff on the internet that this woman is a liar and she's some horrible person like Amber Heard or something. Yeah. I mean, look, keep an open mind. What's wrong with keeping an open mind and looking at the, the evidence, you know, let's see what it is in court. Uh, honestly, I don't know that much about that case. Yeah. So yeah, do I, to be I honest. was just, I was just judging it based on what he looked like, you know, <laughs> whether that's wrong or right. I guess some people think it's wrong, but same with yeah. Amber and Johnny. Like I didn't even think about this for years until you know, the, the, the court case stopped, like we were involved in this six years ago. And then I just right. kind of let it fall by the wayside in my mind. Once the quick, the case started and they broadcasted on TV. Okay. Now it's interesting. Now yeah. we know everything that happened, uh, with, with Evan, Rachel Wood and Marilyn Manson. We don't know. I haven't been paying attention to their lives. So who cares? You know? Yeah. And you know, it's funny that you mentioned the, um, uh, letting it fall by the wayside and how we were involved in it. I still get comments like on my old video about, Oh, how uh, we were uh, participants in helping Amber her to get away with her her lie, you know, helping we helped Amber get away with a hoax. And I'm like, dude, I was a I, I was a, a reporter who was told information that a famous person had a bruise on their face at court. Like, what do you want? What do you want me to do? Just not film it. Do you want me to film Amber Heard and say, hey, Amber, is that a real bruise? Are you lying? Yeah. You want me to say that? About Think about that. Imagine if she wasn't lying, how much of an asshole I would have looked like. Think about the reality of that. They expect you in that moment to have said to Morgan Tremaine and his boss, listen, guys, I'm not going to participate in helping her. I'm not buying it. Perpetrate this hoax. <laughs> like, how the hell do we yeah. know? <laughs> no, it's absurd. Could have been, I mean, at the time, who knew? Maybe it was a bruise. None of this evidence come up. People are so stupid. I want to talk about something in regards to that later, too, with this Constance Wu. Uh, okay. who, who said that she almost committed suicide over people's Twitter comments. I didn't, um, I, you mentioned that. I didn't see that. Let's just, just talk about it now while we're, while we're here. Well, okay. So she returned to social media after a few years. Uh, she took a break Well, she's back to promote a book, which, you know, okay. But she took a break in 2019 because she had gotten the news that her television show fresh off the boat had been picked up for another season and this upset her everyone thought because and i i can't remember if she admitted this or if it was just like came out in the press later because she had been in this movie crazy rich asians which was a big hit right. she probably wanted the freedom to go and be a movie star now but if you got a tv show shooting schedule it's very hard to do it's very hard to juggle those two so in the heat of the moment she tweeted like oh shit like uh this is ugh, this sucks and everyone came down on her from uh the asian american community well not everyone but a lot of people apparently saying you this is wrong you know we need representation you're you're like how could you be upset that your tv show got picked up 
And like, A, I understand. Look, because, you know, we read the comments. I read the comments on all the videos I post to see what they are. And I bet when you're a big celeb and everyone's telling you how much of a, you know, a piece of shit you are and how horrible you are for your community, it might be tough. But A, don't read and don't read too much into the comments, Constance. B, these people who are just like want to instruct everyone on how they're supposed to feel about something in their life. Uh, she, she got the news of the TV show. She's She doesn't have to be grateful for every little morsel that Hollywood gives her. Oh my God, thank you for letting this TV show continue so I can keep burning the pay. No, she's trying to make big moves, power moves. She's trying to elevate even more in her community by going into movies. And these dimwits are too dense to even understand that. Hello, Jesse. <laughs> right. Like I should, you know, like imagine if Dante Greco were to start complaining about how, oh God, like uh, Jesse Rowe wants me on his podcast again, right? No, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, what, you know, hey, just be grateful that I'm offering you an opportunity, Dante. Okay. No, I, I agree with you. I, I'll be honest. She, I have. She almost go- committed suicide over it. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, oh, she wow. She tried to. She attempted. Okay, I just pulled this article up. So you mentioned it earlier. I have not read a thing about this. I got to be honest. Like, so you, so she, sorry, you, Wu, said that she was suicidal based on this reaction just because she was, what, like she was upset that fans didn't like, so because this is the problem with Hollywood in general, I'll put it just, or just fame in general, where I could see it from both sides, right? One side of it is, yeah, you should be grateful for how lucky you are, right? Like that people are worshiping you and people, you know, are there's all this voyeurism in society where they look at you through this lens of you are better than other people just because you're famous and because you're you get to pretend to be somebody else on television and you're on magazine covers and things like that. But at the same time, that means that you're not allowed to have ownership or authority over your own career decisions simply because you're afraid of upsetting a group of people and i don't know if you saw the movie scream 2022 which was sort of it's sort of referred to this but in, in scream 2022 one of the things about it is toxic fandom and how fans claim ownership over intellectual property and over the actors involved in the intellectual property. And that like, if you mess up a sequel or if you mess up a reboot of some kind that you're somehow you're, you're like, you're somehow destroying something that's close to their heart. And you've committed some sort of like act of almost like violence against them just because, just because you didn't do it the way that they wanted you to do it. And this happens with like Indiana Jones when people heard that Chris Pratt was going to play Indiana Jones and everybody freaked out. Everybody heard that you know when Ryan Johnson directed The Last Jedi, everybody freaked out. Like Ryan Johnson is now like a, a he's just basically like the mo- most hated man in the world among Star Wars fans. Your fandom and your love of something doesn't give you the right to that property that other people have created. You're just a yeah, fan. Just shut, shut the fuck up. Yeah, I'm reading this article that you have here right now, where I it said I made careless tweets about the renewal of my TV show. Think of how ridiculous that statement is. She, it was season six. She's put her time in. She, it's a business. She's trying to move up. Okay, she can be frustrated. It doesn't mean that the Asian American community is going to fall apart because she doesn't want to be on a TV show anymore. Right. And by the way, this was three years ago and everything's fine. Everyone is fine. All those people who were upset with her and DM'd her that she was a blight on the community. I'm sure they're doing just fine. Yeah, it's there's ridiculous. But Jesse, hold on real quick. We should say one thing because I know you agree with me. All of my subscribers and everyone who's ever commented on my videos and watched, I love you. You are actually I've engaged with pretty much every single comment even with the people who have, you know, something not nice to say. And, you know, I'm not talking about you. I'm really not. Uh, the, there's a certain class of people on Twitter who are the real issue. I, I think you would agree, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that, uh, like, 
I'm okay with people like disagreeing with me or getting upset with me about things that I say, like I mentioned about, uh, about Manson, like, you know, I, I get it. Like maybe I was probably wrong about, I I'm not right about everything. I'm just a stupid guy on the internet at the end of the day. Right. But when it comes to other people's work, when it comes to the, the hard work that other people put in, if you're that person on the internet, it's one thing if you're getting mad about somebody's opinions about something or getting mad about something that somebody puts out into society, like some sort of toxic perspective that that goes viral in society and you have responsibility to to reel that in and, and be be smarter, be more responsible about what you say. That's one thing. But to be upset about what somebody decides to do with their career. You don't know what Constance Wu has dealt with on the set of, of of her work. You don't know what she's going through. You don't know. You have no connection to these people whatsoever. So for people to get upset about that is the very definition of toxic fandom. You're claiming over yeah. ownership, not just over an intellectual property, but over another person's right to make decisions about what's best for themselves. And that's just. And even, absurd. even just to feel frustrated, like like the rest of you, you don't feel frustrated with your jobs. Right. You know? Yeah. What if she works uh, with like an asshole? Yeah. We were talking about, oh, yeah, the, the fans who expected you to take some kind of stand against Amber Heard, despite not knowing any of that at the time. It's like there's no logic to it. I will say this about that. Most of the people who have followed me and and. Because I did an inter the interview with Eric Hundley and where I talked about that, how I very briefly talked about it. And I said how, you know, some people were like blaming, saying that I was like uh, an accessory to Amber Heard's hoax. I, I did see some comments and very supportive comments, people saying like, dude, you were just doing your job. Like, you know, the people who blame you are just like Johnny stands to the point of toxicity. And so I appreciated that. I will say most of my subscribers and people who have commented on that i i appreciate that i don't i don't think that the people who have subscribed to us are are in that realm because i think that the, i don't think that they would have subscribed to us because i think that they hate tmz so much for like yeah. thinking that they've participated in it in some way they wouldn't have even subscribed to us because they probably just thought we're we're part of it you know so that we're no, problematic these, or these something. are people who just yeah they they enjoy you know hearing about what we talk about i guess i don't know I, but I, I i like i said i've talked to uh, pretty much everybody so these are bright people i mean yeah. that i'm not i'm not just saying I, that i'm not pandering i i agree i wouldn't i wouldn't keep talking about it if i was concerned about there's my followers between, in some way. like the the twitter sphere is really where all the toxicity is you know? yeah. yeah 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 that's why you like stay off twitter if anything if you're gonna stay off anything as a celeb stay off twitter it's a nightmare that's where all the bots Constance, are, right, Dante? That's yeah, where all the bots exactly. are. <laughs> Jesse, poor Constance. She almost committed wooicide. Oh, my. Wooicide. No. That's, that, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> so, F okay. You. For the people who are... Uh, we'll move off of this. But for the people who are, are listening, um, the article Dante was referring to... I'll just give a quick... Um, breakdown of it. Constance Wu is speaking about her mental health crisis following her 2019 fresh off the boat Twitter controversy. Fresh. So this was a tweet from 2019. This is three years ago. She took to Twitter on Thursday, just yesterday, to share her first social media post in three years, uh, where she shared her reaction in, in reaction to the renewal of the to the renewal of the ABC sitcom Fresh Off the Boat. And so she said, I'm so upset right now, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, the next part is hard to talk about. I was afraid of coming back on social media because I almost lost my life from it. Quote, she wrote three years ago when I made careless tweets about the renewal of my TV show, it ignited outrage and internet shaming that got pretty severe. I felt awful about what I'd said. Did, uh, uh, why do you feel awful about it? And when a few DMS from a fellow Asian actress told me I'd become a blight on the Asian American community, I started feeling like I didn't even deserve to live anymore, that I was a disgrace to Asian Americans and they'd be better off without me. Yeah. Like how about that fellow actress was probably jealous 
that your show got picked up for another season because most actors are out there struggling just to get a bite to eat. And she's sitting there thinking like you, you know, arrogant bitch. You're not happy that you got another season of of, uh, of pay. You know, that's right. probably where that came from. But look, to, to retain just some sense of perspective here, we are a couple of white guys talking about how Asian American people should feel about this. So we re yeah. we recognize that we understand that. But I get the sense. I don't think that this was like something that was coming from like the Asian American community. This was coming from some like wokest, like just hypersensitive people that were just looking yeah. for somebody to blame. Here, here's the thing. It's, 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 yeah, go ahead. It's not like unique or, or it doesn't have to be the Asian American, American unit. Like this is just a template of people being jealous people being upset uh like she could be asian american she could be black she could be white she could be you know italian um the community thing is just a little add-on because right. basically what it comes down to is like your fellow actress is jealous uh people in the community are just upset because they hear they they're, they're just like i don't know trying I to I shouldn't have had so much rosé. <laughs> I'm, I'm a to little, formulate my thought. I got a little buzz from the Boochcraft, and I told you this was going to be a good episode because I, I was really planning on letting out. Either way, let's just let's just end it here. Constance yeah. Wu has nothing to apologize for, and if you are one of the people who were like who go after actors or actresses or just people high profile people in general for like career decisions that have absolutely no impact over society as a whole you should be ashamed of yourself constance Wu is nothing to apologize for period end of story it is what it is i hope she's doing okay i hope she sees this which i know she never will but you know jazzy it'd be it'd be great if you would support buy her you. new book that oh, does she have a book? Really I, a lot to her. I had yeah, no that's idea. That's why she's back on Twitter, because she's got a book. So oh, please buy so that. she's selling a book. Okay. All right. Um, I uh I didn't this is this is super off topic, but I uh I don't know if you did you see you're an Elon stan, right? You're just a you're just a hyper Elon stan. <laughs> You buy I, you do you buy Dogecoin every single time he posts the picture of his oh dog, my right? God. I was doing it last year and I should, you know what the problem was? I should have, when he was giving those interviews to DMZ about, oh, you never know, maybe Dogecoin will be the thing. I should have listened to him because I should have known he was going to pump the market up so I that know. he could inflate his own holdings in Tesla and, uh, you know, make his, his quarterly earnings look higher than they actually were. Uh, allegedly. That's what He's, I've read. Right. But I like Elon. I don't like Elon. Depends on what he's doing. But you it's know, a love-hate relationship always with Elon Musk. I uh, yeah. before we get into this, I did buy Shiba Inu last year. I put mm -hmm. like a thousand dollars into Shiba Inu. Um, back in uh, I want to say it was like one month after my time at TMZ had ended. Um, I purchased a thousand dollars worth of Shiba Inu, and. The timing was perfect because then Elon posted a tweet of um of his dog. I, what's the dog's name? I forget. Is it? I, I don't know the name of the dog. The, the little the Shiba Inu his dog. Dog. Yeah, it's a Shiba Inu dog. Yeah, but I don't know the name of it. Whatever. So and then the market takes that as a sign of hey, let's pump this crypto coin. And I turned a thousand dollars into I don't know what it was. It was like five grand or something in the span of like a week. And of course, now that is worth about three hundred dollars. <laughs> oh. yeah, <laughs> but see, I, did... I was supposed to be a crypto millionaire right now from I last know. year. What a nightmare! You know, I do want to tell this story one time about how I was a poker player. I, I've talked about this before, but I when when Black Friday happened, which was when online poker in the US was um made was basically just blacked out. They 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 shut down online poker in the US. Um the federal government. I yeah, had sure. right. I had uh some money online and I had to fight to get it back and everything. The only way I could play was through a little thing called cryptocurrency. I had no idea what it was. So I had to buy a little thing called Bitcoin 
and I won some money on some black market poker sites. I had a few thousand dollars of Bitcoin back in 2013. I don't want to talk about it, but maybe I should because I sold it. And you, you would have never had to shoot that bruise. Oh, my you God. Never, God well, your life would have been so much better. Here's the thing. I probably would have just sold it when I saw that it was like crashing in 2017 or something. You know what I mean? Like when yeah, I, I like, it got it up gone to 20 up. grand before that. I know, but I'm saying like, I probably would have sold it at some point for like triple the money. I probably would have been so confused because there's no backing to it. There's no, you know, there's really no um, securitization behind it. So I would have yeah. been, I would have been scared to leave it in there. But man, I think about that all the time. And like, I, I I've, I've done the calculations. And I don't want to reveal online what the number would have been had I just held to this day. I don't want to reveal online what it would have been. Uh, I, I, I would be now, now I could be on a yacht. Like I'll I've... put it that way. I would be on a yacht oh, right now. Yeah. Don't tell your wife. Oh, I've told her. And <laughs> she hates crypto, but she's like, yeah, that's, you know, you no, know, maybe you should. Uh -huh. You know what she says? I wish you would have talked to me. I would have been yeah. like, you would have told me to sell. You would have told me to sell it. Give me a break. You would have. Yeah. So Jesus anyways, to get back to Elon before I get too depressed. Um, <laughs> okay. So he obviously fucked his assistant or whatever, or not his assistant. I'm sorry. He, he, he banged one of his uh, executives at, at Tesla, had a baby with her. But the big news that broke this week is that his father has had, is it one child or two? I forget with his stepdaughter. I think it was one. His father had one child. Elon, I believe, had two children with the executive. Right. Okay. But so Elon yes, had twins his, with the executive, right? Twins. Okay. And and his father had uh, a child with his thirty-five-year-old stepdaughter. Right. But Jesse, you know, we shouldn't be surprised. We're talking about a guy who was what a diamond miner in uh, or emerald. You know, in South Africa. Mines. Right. Yeah. I'm just picturing the movie Blood Diamond. You know, that's Elon Musk's upbringing. Great movie, by the way. If you've never seen it, Blood Diamond is fan fucking tastic. It's such a good movie. Yeah. Leonardo yeah, DiCaprio's really South African accent is probably going to get it canceled one day, but it's still mm -hmm. a great movie. He didn't deserve the Oscar nomination. He should have got it for Departed that year, but okay, fine. That's Hollywood. He should have won for Aviator, by the way. Jamie, I love Jamie Foxx. I, whatever. I don't want to get into that. Yeah. But, anyways, go ahead. Um, yeah. So his father's an, an emerald miner and his son is the richest man in the world. So, A, if there's anybody who can afford all these kids, it's the Musk family. B, this is just how ultra wealthy people operate. They don't really care they don't need to care and nowadays they care even less like now that the cat is out of the bag the cat being jeffrey epstein and his whole uh you know underage sex trafficking thing like and like it's happened everyone's known about it for a few years now and there have been almost no consequences except for Ghislaine maxwell winding up in a jail in, in a club fed right where uh, she's knitting and playing tennis yeah, that was it. All the rich people now are like, you know what? Who cares? We spent all these years trying to cover up our uh, our debauchery and uh, how, uh, how how how, how much uh, we're, we're degenerates. And nowadays, everything's out on the internet, no matter what. And no one's doing anything about it. No one can do anything about it because the news cycle moves so fast. And everyone in like the public, like like guys like us, we realize what really can we do? Tweet about it. People yeah. tweeted about the Trump administration for five years. All their hashtags didn't make a difference. Yeah, he lost the election. But during that time, all the marches and the hashtags and the pussy hats and everything didn't actually make any difference at all it had no effect they did not change their strategy one bit had they not lost you'd still be marching well that's what i was going to say is that this that's totally a um a side effect of the trump presidency right is how we used to have like people like nixon would resign if if he was being investigated for watergate right where he was how he was spying on his political opponents and he sent people into the watergate hotel and all that stuff Nowadays, 
that would just be it wouldn't even be a blip on the radar. It would be a big story on CNN. And then, you know, the political opponents would brush it off. And, you know, it would be it would be over with after a month. Right. This is how and honestly, like Benghazi was kind of like that, too, a little bit where, you know, it was it was a huge thing. Democrats were able to brush it off. But I think with the Trump era, we've gotten to a point where scandal is no longer scandal. It's just news fodder. It's media fodder. Yeah. And it's enough. And but, I do like, though, that people don't feel like they have to apologize all the time and resign or go away. You know, overall, I think that's a good thing because it had become weaponized. You know, this whole like you must apologize and leave as soon as you do anything bad. Uh, when you saw what happened to Al Franken, for instance, like, I think it's good for people to say, you know what? This is what Constant Wu should should have said. Shut the fuck up. And I'm not going anywhere. Like, you know, feel how you want, but I'm I'm going to keep doing my thing. I'm so glad you said that because I have been banging the drum, like just like screaming from the mountaintops for like the past four years since Franken resigned. You know, hey, I don't care if you if you're a Republican or a Democrat who follows me, whatever. Like, I've made it pretty clear. I'm pretty liberal. I thought that the Democrats coming down and Franken for that shit was one of the biggest mistakes they've ever made politically. It was so stupid to to tell him he needed to resign because he took a photo with some girl on an airplane. Like, you know, whatever. And it we're I, I just I feel like that that's a problem where there's this disconnect with America where there's like half of America that's trying to be like the moral authority on every issue. And then there's another half that doesn't give a fuck. Um, yeah. And I think not giving a fuck is kind of attractive, you know, from a political standpoint, I can understand well, also, that. So I don't agree with it, but I can the, understand it. The people that are trying to be the moral authority don't admit or even they don't have the self-awareness to examine their own hypocrisy when it comes to the moral authority. Like, you know, there's right. so many things that you are just part of. like even the, the iPhone. It's the classic example. Slaves at a Foxconn factory who can't even kill themselves anymore because they put up nets outside of it for the for the suicide jumpers made this phone and you are using it. Right. This and you're is like the result of much pain and unhappiness for some unfortunate people who were born in an area where the only option was Foxconn. You know, it might as well be, you know, the one step above is Walmart. Right. Um, and 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 not and not just that, but also people who voted for Biden like me, I voted for Biden, but people who did uh, who are like critical of. Um, what's his name? Uh, the God, the, the black Supreme Court justice. He's he's slipping my mind right now. I'm sorry. I'm Clarence blanking. Thomas. Clarence Thomas on his stance on abortion and everything. And oh, how is it? You know, it's horrible for women, which I agree. Horrible for women, what they're doing. Joe Biden was like, was critical of Anita Hill at the time that they were doing the Anita Hill hearings for Clarence Thomas confirmation. You can't fucking support Biden and, and have the same feeling on this uh, on Clarence Thomas now. Like he's part of the reason why Clarence Thomas got confirmed to begin with. So there's so much hypocrisy in all of this about taking the moral high ground. The best strategy to take is just play dirty. If 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 they're gonna play dirty, you play dirty too. Don't worry about the consequences of of, of upsetting somebody. It's stupid. It, it's stupid at this point. Yeah, and so when I hear about a story like Elon Musk's dad, or even Elon Musk, yes, with thank his executives, you. Let's like, let's go back. Can, thank you. Can I get mad about that in some moral way? Sure, you could say, "What is a seventy-two-year-old doing impregnating a thirty-five-year-old who's his stepdaughter?" Very creepy. But at the same time, like. Me disapproving of it is not going to make one goddamn difference in his life. And it's just going to upset me. Right. You know? I mean, let's, I, if I, let's if I clear let up. Get... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, like, if I let myself be consumed by this and be like, oh, God, Elon Musk's dad, Errol, his lusty dad, as I read in that article that you got up there. Yeah. Elon Musk's lusty dad had another kid oh what's this world coming to like i'm here i can talk I, about it with you that's about as much as i can do about it right i agree with you let's let's clear up though that like don't impregnate your stepdaughter 
like just as like a uh, a bare minimum yeah, of I mean, being sure, a stepfather yeah. don't impregnate your step but um yes. so yes. i will uh i i'm not i'm not outraged by this I'm more so just amused by it because of, of the quotes that have come out from this story, because obviously Elon recently tweeted this, uh, that the biggest threat to civilization civilization is underpopulation, I think is what he said. And, um, and now here we have in this story, after we find out that his father has impregnated his stepdaughter, the only thing we are on earth for is to reproduce is what he says. Um. So the the pregnancy was unplanned. I'm not practical. She's 35. Errol declared. Eventually, if I'm still around, she might wind up back with me. Um. Any man who marries a younger woman, even if you feel slightly, even if you feel very sprightly, it's going to be nice for a while. But there's a big gap, and that gap is going to show itself. Um. So this is her and oh, this he, wait, he he has seven children already and Elon has 10. Right. Um yeah, Elon really is doing his part to uh help which that is something I wanted to get into because he's he, he you know he talked about underpopulation and how oh the no I'm sorry it was the declining birth rate is what he said. The declining birth rate is the biggest issue. Put so this is my where his mouth is but this is my love hate thing with Elon because he's always been the global warming guy and we need the electric car to uh you know to to stop with global warming but i mean overpopulation is also a thing right and that's well, contributing you know, to global warming so i that's where i just i'm just i'm confused about where he really stands on all this is like is he trying to appease the elon stands that have supported him from the right wing is he trying you know while trying to still maintain the people who love him from the left it's like he's trying to do this both sides i don't really know what elon actually believes i'll put it that way elon believes in tesla doing well if mm -hmm. he has to pretend that it's about climate change he'll do that if he has to have more kids to, to you know somehow feel better about himself he'll do that here's the thing He's the global, the climate change thing. But now also he's one of the guys who says, hey, liberals, how do you think we make and power these batteries? It's by fossil fuels, you know, well, also the line that comes out, which also, actually makes a lot of sense. I'm surprised I never heard that before growing up because when I was younger and I was like, yeah, we need clean energy and just get rid of these fossil fuels and then everyone said well wait a minute you need those to power the battery and i thought huh well it also one of those moments of self-awareness that the that people don't have that i have worked on myself to attain and also the lithium mines where the batteries are built are, are a huge environmental setback because you basically are building on native land and it's it, it, the whole the whole mining of lithium for electric cars or for battery powered energy in some way is a huge environmental setback. Um, so we uh, we do have to crack that somehow. We have to figure that out yeah. sometime. Well, but, no, I'm just saying that Elon used to say that when it was convenient to to market his cars. You know, it's like yeah, yes, I'm that's, all about global warming. That's and the problem the I have with that. It's like, look, yeah. That's the problem I have with him is he's been uh, he's he's made a lot of promises about what his cars can do. And I wonder if a lot of it, you know, was just to boost stock value and things like that, where it wasn't it wasn't actually promises he could make at the time. The technology wasn't there. I feel like there's like a connection between him and Trump in that way where he's sort of uh he exaggerates the potential of his company to boost the stock where I think he means well, but he's being dishonest in other ways. And that's, yeah. I mean, that's look, ultimately it, it will help to have more electric cars on the road because it'll cut down on emissions. So it will help. It, it's not entirely disingenuous. Let hey, let me ask you something, Dante. Just... Have you ever impregnated your stepdaughter in the back of a Tesla? <laughs> Is that where it happened? I don't know, but the one with the suicide doors, right? Uh, no, I have not, but uh, I'm not a Musk, right? In the Musk family, 
your uh, you you are uh, your prime directive is to procreate the earth you know they are kind of like uh they got a little bit of genghis khan in them and honestly if they could they'd probably slaughter millions of people as well to bring down the global temperature as genghis did uh, does he have to repopulating the earth with their own offspring right does he have to call her mom is is she is she like his stepmom now Wait, wait, let me think this. You know, this rose has gotten to me. Let me yeah. let me think that. Okay. What are Who's the calling who mom? Does Elon have to call her mom? Is that her right there? Sorry. Yeah, Jaina. Does Elon is that her oh, is that his stepmom now? Cuz Elon's older than her. So, yes. That's what, his mother. How does the family tree work? 35. Okay. So does this is that kid his aunt? Is that right. Elon Musk's aunt right there? Yeah. What are the what is the family tree looking like at this point with the Musk family? Um Errol admitted Great. that he hadn't asked Jaina. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This I loved this part. E- Errol admitted that he hadn't asked Jaina for a paternity test to make sure he was the father of their three-year-old, saying, I haven't checked her DNA, but she looked just like my other daughters, so it's pretty obvious, you know. I have about six people, women who claim that their child is my child right now. Obviously, they're opportunists, but there was a period in Johannesburg in the 80s that I was going to going out with a different woman every night. I had plenty of dates, so it's quite conceivable that one of them could actually come back someday and say, this is your child. It's possible. Do I look like Elon Musk at all or, or Errol Musk? I, I would like to put a claim in if that's possible. Right. Hello, Dad. The elderly Johannesburg, <laughs> the elderly patriarch has, hasn't ruled out the possibility of having more children in the future. How old is this guy? He wants to have Again, more kids. What does he care? His son is the richest man in the world. Those kids will be fine. No, uh, they're not. As I said the elites do not care anymore. He's just like, yeah, I went out with a different woman every night and I probably fathered a bunch of kids in the 80s. Who cares? Like 20 years ago, this interview would never be given. This would be an outrage and it would probably do some real damage to the Tesla sock. Now it's just like, huh, Elon memes. Yeah, but all these kids are going to be so fucked up. They're going to be so messed up. They're going to be without a father figure. That's all like super wealthy kids. Like the the father doesn't have time. Even Errol has said, hey, you you know, the kids stay with me a little bit and then uh, I kind of get rid of them because I get tired of them. You know, it's uh, like they're they're gonna have a trust fund. They're gonna have money, and that's it. They'll have to figure it out. They'll be okay. They'll be playing polo, right? They will be playing polo. That is for sure. Um, okay. I don't know how to make a transition to this, but I'll just say it. I, I did you have you been paying attention to the news today? Because something. I, something broke the internet that I was. I, oh I saw God, this Jesse, morning. What, what happened? I I woke up this morning and I look at my Twitter and I saw that the president of the United States fist bumped the what was he the prime minister no no the the uh, MBS of Saudi Arabia king. I'm gonna pull this up but okay so obviously there was uh, the media had a field day with this right because uh, people have because obviously Ma- feel like MBS was directly responsible for the murder of uh Khashoggi the reporter the American reporter who he, went into he, the he's embassy he's a crime boss right yeah he's a crime boss he had a guy chopped up like a mob boss like he's Tony Soprano so before uh Biden goes in he is asked about go uh I'm sorry so before he goes in Biden is asked about his, uh, yeah, come on, man, Uh, about, you know, what he's going to bring up. And he he's if is he going to bring up the Jamal Khashoggi thing? And he says, oh, I'm you know, he gives no comment to it. And then a video comes out where he walks up to the uh, out of the car to to meet him. And this happens. He fist bumps. MBS, and then he walks in, right? So obviously Twitter went nuts with this, and it was like a big story because he was, you know, people are saying, oh, he doesn't want to shake his hand because of the whole the Muslim thing on shaking hands. There was a lot of that, but also 
just the optics of it that an American journalist was very likely <laughs> slaughtered and hacked up at the orders of this man right here. He can't be shaking his hand. I mean, look, this Bad one luck. I'll give Biden some some credit for. What is he supposed to do? Obviously, Mohammed is going to give his hand to shake. What is Biden supposed to do? Give him the finger? Like, you know, yeah. it's something. Or like, go like, you know. This is a thing about a fist bump. Right. This is a thing about presidents is we do overlook. We are not overlook. Sorry. We we are too hyper aware of things that they do when they're with other world leaders. Like what a lot of people like a lot of Republicans wanted Obama to just like cold cock vladimir putin anytime they met in person like what he, what was he supposed to do like just punch him in the face exactly. and when he met or him like all this t- to talk about like trump and kim jong-un like okay they met like five years ago now has anything happened right no he, he stepped into the dmz and and nothing's happened so it's like yeah the whole optics thing this this is like an antiquated thing you know maybe biden should have shaken his hand and just like pulled him in and said hey see that's the thing Khashoggi. I, I think that that would have been better. I feel like the fist bump was just so much worse because shaking his hand was at like at least like, OK, I'm going to shake your hand and we're going to go have a discussion. Fist bump is like brotherly love stuff. Like, you're my boy, dog. What's up? Yeah. What's up, MBS? How you doing? I guess, and, you know what? It also probably feels like, you know, he didn't come up with that himself. Like the AIDS, it feels yeah. like it was focus group. PR All team. His age were like, how about a fist bump? Can we do a fist bump? Can we get away with a fist bump? Oh my you God, know what wait, he should have done? What are they going to say? He should have done the L bump from COVID. Yeah. Remember the L bump that they were doing? And Trump didn't want to do it with like some of his uh, his medical team when they were like trying to do the L bump to, to show people on TV. And Trump, he did not want to do it. He wanted to shake your hand, look you in the eye, no mask. And they wanted those doctors, they wanted to do the L bump. That's what Biden should have done. That would have been fucking hilarious. That would have gone viral. Yeah. Um, so this is what Biden said in the presser when asked about the fist bump. Very quick, a nine second clip. You're coming under a lot of fire for your fist bump with the crown prince. So I, <laughs> I just want to give you a chance to respond to that. And But also, how can you be sure that. Yeah. So, OK, that's not the full quote, obviously. I don't think laughing sure. it off is a good thing. I, I I think it's actually a very serious question. Why are you fist bumping a guy that potentially slaughtered an American citizen? I mean, listen, I wish now I, I'm going to say this, but then I'm going to explain myself. I wish he had laughed and been like, you people are so fucking stupid. Do you understand <laughs> that I'm over here trying to negotiate some fucking gas prices so that you cocksuckers could stop complaining about how high gas is in this country while Vladimir Putin has cut off the p- access to the pump? Um, I'm doing my best here. Now, again, right. I don't like that we have to go groveling to Saudi Arabia to get gas. I mean, they flew fucking two planes into our World Trade Center. God damn it. Right. Let's fuck, let's talk about that before Khashoggi. We should talk about that. But it's a business thing. He's got to go there. Like, if you want him to try to get us some low gas prices, then let him fist bump. Let him give MBS a hand job for God's sake. Just, well, I'm trying. What matters to me is the pump. So okay. So he brought. Okay, I, I agree. I mean, I've look. Hey guys. I've switched to electric cars, okay? So my gas prices have significantly dropped in the past couple of years, but I get it. There's a lot of people out there that are struggling, that are eating a huge chunk of change every single month on their gas prices. I get it. Um, with that being said, he did. he does claim that he raised the Jamal Khashoggi murder um, in this meeting as like the top of the meeting. He said, go ahead. Jamal. And Muhammad said, what? And he said, right. Come on, man. Yeah, exactly. He said, Hey man, why, why'd you hack up that journalist? Come on, man. So let's put a gas tank in his, in his lap. So, I mean, I mean, this is the thing going on with uh, the PGA tour, right? With Phil Mickelson and all these golfers were, it, there's this big fear to criticize Saudi Arabia because of what an, a financial influence they have over us. Um, so with that being said, 
Biden claims that he did bring up the murder of Khashoggi at the top of his meeting, making it clear what he thought of it. Um, he says, I was straightforward and direct in discussing it. I made it. I made my view crystal clear. I said it very straightforward. For an American president to be silent on an issue of human rights is inconsistent with who we are and who I am. Fist bump. Mohammed bin Salman's response was that he was not personally responsible. And I indicated that I thought he was. Fist bump. Biden continued about the 2018 killing at the Saudi embassy in Turkey that his U.S. intelligence says the crown prince approved. Fist bump. Before the meeting, Biden had declined to comment on raising Khashoggi's murder to this on the Saudi and the Saudi record on human rights in general. So I don't want to be too hard on him, but I just think that the fist bump was it, it's a I don't know. Just shake his hand. I will say this. Was he concerned about the the thing on the Muslim side of the world where because they wipe? I don't want to be uh, uh, Islamophobic here, but. They it's wipe okay, their Jason, ass. You're a racist. Go ahead. There's a th- whole thing about them wiping their uh with their left hand. So you don't shake you don't shake with the left hand, you only shake with the right hand. I that's a whole thing. That. Yeah, that's a whole thing on the on that side of the world. I could be wait, wait, wait. You're going. telling me that in Saudi Arabia, there's a whole population. Not Saudi Arabia, just wipe their in ass. Muslim world. Oh, Muslim you're world. you're talking about the entire Muslim world. Oh, you're I'm conflating, yes. People. Yeah. <laughs> that wipe their ass with their bare left hand. So I've heard a story about uh, uh, my wife's stepdad went to the uh, went to the Muslim part of the world. I forget Middle East. And you don't shake hands with the left hand because that is known as like because they didn't have toilet paper in a lot of parts of the world over there. So you're you, wiping with your left hand. You just use your hand. Well, and do, they, do they do they have soap? Yes, they do. But it's like you do it afterwards, right? Where you know because the oh the, sure because toilet I mean, paper is like a delicacy or whatever. M- you're not sh- trying to shake hands mid shit, right? But so <laughs> I weird, right? It's true though. Look at I'm not I'm not making this up. This is a thing. Get some papyrus. What the fuck? But uh, yeah, what do you, what do you guys think? I, I he's it. He's in a tough spot. I mean, look, yeah, he has to bring up this Khashoggi murder and like say it out loud. And then MBS gets to go, well, I didn't do that. And then Joe has to be like, okay, uh, anyways, we need some gas. You know, he's there to get us some gas. I'd be surprised if he got through that meeting without uh, falling asleep at this point. I really would. I mean, I'm not, I I'm not trying to be disrespectful, him. but. Uh, he, he, imagine he's probably exhausted from the jet lag uh, of that flight over into Saudi Arabia. Uh, I wonder yeah. if they pumped him with steroids or something before that meeting, uh, because yeah. I have heard things about how, you know, before debates with Trump, you know, he was so out of it that they had to pump him up with steroids and things like that. A, they put in an emergency call to Hunter and said, Hunter, we need your best uppers. OK, your dad's got to meet MBS. Right. Exactly. Um so Hunter, can you go buy more crack cocaine off of that hooker? Your dad has to meet Mohammed bin Salman. I know, isn't that that's the next thing, right? They're talking about Hunter again. I haven't actually watched what is being said about Hunter, but I just saw that he's in the news again. That's- you know, the funny thing is everything I hear about Hunter it reminds me of Jesse Rowe. Oh, how's that? What did I do? <laughs> crack, the cocaine, crack cocaine. Hookers. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Hunter Biden sounds like a pretty fun hang. I'm not going to lie. He might. You're a mix of Hunter Biden and Errol Musk. Right. He might have some corrupt uh, ties to Ukraine and crack cocaine. But I would Mm. imagine that hanging out with Errol Musk and Hunter Biden would be a pretty fun night. It'd be a pretty fun hang. Speaking of me, the invite. I'm there. So this is there's no way to segue to this. Uh, but there's one thing before we go, because we are running out of time here. There's just one yeah. thing I, I really need to get off my chest. And it pissed me off to no end when I saw this. Um, are you familiar with the show Stranger Things, Dante? I watched the most previous season. After taking two seasons off, I, I did, yes. Okay, so are you aware that there is a show 
uh, with a yes. bunch of kids that have grown up on television in front of us, and one of the and, and many of them are still under the age of eighteen, or a couple of and them. Hunter are. Biden's a big fan, by the right. way. Right, and so is Errol Musk. Oddly enough, <laughs> um, <laughs> probably Elon too. But so uh, there's an actor named Noah Schnapp who is uh, he plays the character Will Byers on on Stranger Things, and um. He is 17 years old. Let me just be clear about that. He's 17 years old. And there is another actor named, God, I'm forgetting his name, something Quinn. Uh, God damn it. Anthony Quinn. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on a minute. Okay. So there's an actor. No, 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 no. No, Joseph Quinn. It's Noah Schnapp. So there is an actor named Joseph Quinn who was kind of like the, uh, the hero of this year's season. Uh, he plays a, a character who is like uh, accused of a murder that he didn't do. And he becomes like a fan favorite. He's like a long haired guy. Like he, he loves. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And he loves Metallica. He's like a product of the eighties and everything, but he's a British actor and he does an American accent, but he's British. He was on game of Thrones for, for an episode at one point. And the character is named Eddie Munson, by the way. Right, Eddie Stranger Munson. Things fans who don't I, know what we're talking about. I knew it was Munson, and I just forgot his first name. But it was Eddie Munson. He's the character who's accused of murder in this most recent season. So, the pop star, Doja Cat, happens to have a little bit of a crush on this actor, Joseph Quinn. And she's trying to figure out a way to hook up with this guy, to meet up with him, to get in, to slide into his DMs. And what does she do? She DMs 17-year-old Noah Schnapp and decides to ask him to hook her up with uh, Joseph's Instagram account, right? Doja Cat, 26 years old, by the way. Doja Cat is 26 years old, texting a, uh, DMing a 17-year-old actor. So Noah Schnapp refers Doja to joseph quinn's instagram right so here i'm going to share this give me a second all right so what happens here noah schnapp decides to share this dm with doja cat trying to hook up with eddie munson from no is it eddie munson or are you thinking of eddie munster the the character name well, no, I, I, it must have been a, a reference to that because his name is Eddie Munson. Unless okay, they're talking so it, about that movie, Kingpin. Either way, I know his last name is Munson. I just forget it was Eddie or not. Anyways, so I, this this story like just absolutely shocked me when I saw it because so Noah Schnapp decides to share the DMs on his personal TikTok or whatever and is like, you know, LOL, Doja Cat texts me, wants to hook up with Joseph. Doja Cat calls him a fucking snake. Uh, what does she say? It's super whack is what she says. She she makes a statement. Um, Where is it? I'm sorry. I have it somewhere here. Give me a is second. Is she friends with Noah Schnapp before all this? Or she just reached out to him first? That's what I don't know. I'm I'm guessing I, they had met at some point. But oh, this is like what... on the show it, that that little kid. um uh, Carazzo, Matarazzo, Joseph Matarazzo, something Matarazzo. Yeah, Plays he's Dustin like Henderson. the best yeah. friend. Yeah, he's the best friend with uh, Joseph Quinn's character. Like, reach out to him first, if anything. So Doja had uh, tweeted about her crush on Quinn, calling him a fr- fine ass shit British actor. Went on Instagram Live to call Schna- say Schnapp's behavior was so unbelievably socially unaware and whack. Added the twenty six added twenty six year old artist saying that's borderline snake shit. That's like weasel shit. And then Schnapp had to tell Variety later on saying so as I should. I apologized. No, you shouldn't. She was total and he says she was totally okay with it. And I was like, I'm sorry how I reacted. Okay. 
let me just keep going with this for a second. It was all good. Schnapp said, I love her. I'm like the biggest fan of her music. I told her that. I was like, you're literally my role model. It's all good. People make such a big deal what out of the, everything. What's that about? Right. Doja Cat is his role model? What She's the fuck? not. He's just trying to play the PR game. She's not his yeah, role model. You know what? People make a big out of everything when it's on the internet. But like in reality, it's a two minute thing. Okay. Do you want to know what's some borderline snake shit and weasel shit is DMing a 17 year old boy when you're 26 years old to hook you up with a dude that you want to fuck? That is weasel snake shit. What did you expect was going to happen? Imagine me for a second that I DM a 17 year old girl. I'm 36 years old. Imagine me DMing a 17 year old girl to like hook up with her 28 year old friend. Just imagine how fucked up that would be and how I would get canceled. I, I would literally yes. be I would lose my career if I was a 20 year old or 30 year old actor or whatever. I mean, they take away your podcast. They would. I would lose all my uh, incredible uh, advertisers and uh, subscribers. I, I couldn't believe that this kid had to apologize for this because my only takeaway was what are you doing as a 26 year old woman? DMing a 17 year old boy to hook you up with like a 30 year old. What are you doing? Jesse, I agree with all of that about the 26 year old, 17 year old stuff. However, now you're going to think I'm some MBS type, you know, <laughs> but I, in principle, I'm on Doja Cat's side. What are you doing leaking DMs about trying to hook up? Like, what if Doja Cat has a man and she's trying to do this on the down low and Noah Schnapp's leaking that? And by the way, is he a 17-year-old minor? And is it creepy for a 26-year-old to be DMing a 17-year-old minor? Absolutely. But 17-year-olds and, and like teenagers in general are the social media masters. So at the very least, you know, children of the future, and we must expect more from them. At the very least, he should know the etiquette. You do not share private messages on the internet, especially when a celebrity is involved. I mean, of course. I, I mean, I don't disagree with sharing private DMs. I, it's, it's uncalled for. I get it. But you're an adult. He's a minor. Like, I, I, yeah. you no, couldn't do some research. You couldn't do a little bit of research to find out that this guy had his own Instagram. You had to yeah, text a 17 way, all, year old. Yeah. What? He only sent her his Instagram, which we could all find. Like what the fuck is wrong with her that she couldn't figure that out of herself or like call a publicist or something. I don't know what I'm more offended by the fact that she DM'd a 17 year old or the fact that she couldn't, she's 26, couldn't figure out how to use the internet. Like you literally, you can find anybody. Especially if they're famous. You can find me and I'm not famous. You can find anybody. Yeah, there are so many other people on that show. Why don't you DM David Harbour, the guy who plays Chief, whatever the fuck is right. that, and ask him. Just DM yeah. anybody above the age of 18 and I wouldn't be upset about how, this. How about DM Joseph Quinn himself? You're a way bigger star than he is overall. Like He would be thrilled if you went into his DMs. I just I, I can't I, I can't get over it that she called him a snake and a weasel. He's 17, though. Like, I, I mean, I get it. You have to be like responsible in some way. But I just feel like this is another example of not having to. You're apologizing for something you shouldn't have to apologize for. Yes. 17 year olds. They are sort of like the gatekeepers of the future of the Internet and everything like that. But at the same time. You're still 17. I did so much stupid shit when I was 17, Dante. Like, I, w I probably would have done the same thing. Imagine you're 17, but, like, your parents might shelter you from the outside world. You probably got really excited that Doja Cat, like, you know, tweeted at you or DM'd you or whatever, like, wanted to yeah. hook up your friend. You're probably well, really excited about it. By the way, Jesse, Joseph Quinn definitely knows now that Doja Cat is into him. So, really, Noah Schnapps did, him a, did her a favor. But do you think that Joseph Quinn is into Doja Cat now? Because I don't he think so. He might look at her like oh, this chick is like a little bit 
she might be a little fucking crazy now. Like, yeah. this is like, yeah, I don't know. Like, she might be, she might be trouble. Yeah, exactly. Like, he's probably looking like, what are you DMing a 17 year old for? No, I honestly, uh, Jesse, President Joe Biden should at most give Doja Cat a fist bump. If I agree. Because she's very disappointing. I agree. Um, I don't disagree with the 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 sentiment of not leaking DMs. I think that's one of like the snake. That is one of the snakiest thing you can do on the internet. I just don't think you have the right to get upset about it if you DM'd an underage person. I just I think that you've lost your right to be upset about somebody leaking your DMs. That's my stance about it. I don't disagree with being upset that somebody leaked your DMs. Yeah, she may have gotten too caught up in the celebrity world and been like, oh, we're both famous. It doesn't matter. I can DM him. But yeah. Right. You know, but that's 17 year olds DMs. But that this goes to the hypocrisy of this. Territory. You know how Drake, you know, how Drake is always texting with Millie Bobby Brown from Stranger Things and everyone's kind of just like, hey, what the fuck? Right. Um, this is this is getting into that territory. Stay out of those DMs. This is getting some Dante Greco territory right here, if you ask me. <laughs> hey, listen, President Biden would shake my hand and he would smile in my face. God and God. wipe his ass with oh, his left goodness. hand afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> right. But I do want to say to all of my subscribers, I have not posted a video in a while. I'm working on one. I'm going to be talking about Comic-Con. But I'm also want to announce I will be going to Comic-Con next week. So I will be providing content from the field in Comic-Con for my first time. Dante recently started posting some field report uh, interviews and things like that. So go check him out on the Dante Greco show. I will be doing something similar, not the same thing. I'll be doing some more man in the street interview with some of the the cosplayers and people at Comic-Con. I, I think that I'll have some fun with it. So stay tuned. That'll be happening and um i just want to say thank you to all the people who have subscribed recently and who have commented and who have gotten really upset with me for some of my takes i just want you to know that i'm listening to you i hear you hey listen while you're down there uh, if you see noah schnapp ask him for joseph quinn's information right i'll be dming a lot of 17 year olds <laughs> while i'm down at comic-con this week <laughs> no that's a joke i will not be I'll be setting a good example, well, Dante. Diego Cobbs. Yeah. Right, exactly. It. Yeah. But anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And to all my front row sexuals and my robots and just my Twitter bots in general who are supporting Marilyn Manson, thank you so much for tuning in. We love you guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on notifications for the Dante Greco Show for uh, the front row. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much. Bye, everybody. Do, 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 do.